We're so glad you're listening in on these important conversations about Brentwood Academy's portrait of a graduate. Today, middle school director Jenny Creighton joins Mr. Masters as they talk about the ways Brentwood Academy faculty members nurture a thoughtful communicator. Jenny, we've been talking about the mission of the school. Brentwood Academy is dedicated to nurturing and challenging each whole person, body, mind, and spirit, to the glory of God, and how out of that conversation, we've come up with five characteristics we've been calling the portrait of a graduate that help articulate what it would look like if we were hitting that target of the mission and ministry of Brentwood Academy. Resilient, critical thinker, thoughtful communicator, problem solver, and Christ follower, those five characteristics. Thinking about that thoughtful communicator piece, you've been a teacher, you're in charge of the middle school now, uh, you interact with parents, with your colleagues, with faculty and students. What does thoughtful communicator mean? So for our students, being a thoughtful communicator means having the ability to develop an idea, mm -hmm. to support that idea and express that idea with evidence. Mm -hmm. That's a really key piece of that. Mm -hmm. And to do it with kindness. Mm -hmm. That's an element that's mm -hmm. maybe a, the biggest struggle mm -hmm. for all of us from mm -hmm. time to time. But the ability to take your idea, support it, not just be a, not just be a feeling, but support it with evidence and with kindness. Mm -hmm. And that, that's digitally which is a big part of their communication outside of school. Mm -hmm. So we talk about even their communication outside of school and how they communicate mm -hmm. verbally, person to person. The pressure for a quick response, whether it's in a debate or somebody comes up with a one-liner to you and you, know, you feel like you have to respond, how does listening well play a part in being a thoughtful communicator? That's actually a huge part of it. And we work on being a thoughtful communicator in so many areas of the mm. school. I think besides just being models, I think all of their mm -hmm. teachers are very thoughtful communicators. So I think it's modeled for them often. But in 6 through 12 in classes, it is being intentionally built. Mm -hmm. So they are learning in their Socratic seminars, in their Harkness discussions, which happen in English and in history, mm -hmm. they're learning how to listen and respond. Mm -hmm. So that's an it's an element of speech. Mm -hmm. The audience in in our speech classes, which are eighth through any in the upper school, their electives. So they are not only graded on their actual speech, mm -hmm. they're graded on what they do as listeners. Mm -hmm. So you are absolutely right. Being a listener and being mm -hmm. able to respond well is a huge part of this. Mm -hmm. And it's being intentionally trained in mm -hmm. all our students. That idea of being a listener, it implies something about being careful enough to really answer uh, the topic at hand or the argument of the opposing person or uh, to enrich the conversation because you really heard what the other person said. Talk a little bit about the caring element of being a thoughtful communicator. You use mm. the word kindness, mm -hmm. but how does that play into the way people choose to respond? Gosh, that is the most difficult thing to train, but it is something that we discuss when we, when we, when we do Socratic seminar, we teach them how to say, I agree with you, and this is why. Let me give you my evidence to back that up. And then we also teach them how to say, you know what? I'm, I'm not on the same page with you, and this is why. Mm -hmm. So again, that training in very specific wording mm -hmm. to how to communicate, we're not on the same page about this, mm -hmm. and this is why. Now, where we have the most struggle is digitally. Mm. How do you say, no, I do not like what you're saying, mm -hmm. and say it well? A lot of times we'll say, don't say it. Wait until you're face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. But starting in the seventh grade, we have a digital communications class, mm -hmm. and they go through a curriculum called Filter First. And all of the 
all of the letters of filter stand mm-hmm. for something specific, but it does truly train them to filter what they say before they say mm-hmm. it. The idea of the word thoughtful presumes that You're you thinking. take the time to think and <laughs> right. not respond quickly or with a, right. a need to rush into an answer. Talk about the development, the kind of person we're becoming as it relates to how we engage this issue of a thoughtful communicator, mm. someone who has something to contribute, but who cares about what that contribution is and the impact of your words or the interactions you're having. Sure. I think this is something that we fight against is particularly with teenagers, but with humans in general, we're so self-focused. Mm. This shifts the narrative you're becoming others focused. Mm. You're not just thinking about yourself all the time. Mm. And that's a that is so counter counter cultural. I was gonna say it's it doesn't come naturally. It does, does it? not. It does not, but it is it is a it's a big part of all of this training. Mm. Just thinking about other people in the Socratic seminar, which is one of the main things that we do Mm -hmm. that really trains our students very intentionally to be thoughtful communicators. And that's a six through 12. Mm -hmm. That is, we do not wait until the high school to start that. We do that every single year, even, even with our little ones. So there is actually a moderator who makes sure that everyone has the opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. And, and that moderator changes every time. So they are being trained Mm -hmm. to look for, am I giving the other person an opportunity to say what he or she thinks? So there's, there's some major positives and nuances Mm -hmm. to that Socratic seminar. That's beyond just the academic piece of it. Mm -hmm. It's so helpful in teaching them how to think about other people, think about Mm -hmm. what they're saying as they listen really well and responding with truth and with kindness. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, think about how to respond. Sometimes that response is personal. It's in an interaction. It's in a formal setting in a classroom. Sometimes it's when you hear something going on and deciding whether to step in or how to step in because an onlooker can ignore something or take responsibility. Talk about that aspect of being thoughtful, Mm. that decision making and how we cultivate that sense of opportunity and responsibility. Sure. So that's an area that we would touch more on in our advisory groups. Mm -hmm. And and actually, Alyssa Hall, our school counselor, and two of our speech teachers Mm -hmm. are creating a curriculum for upper school advisory groups. And it is called Thoughtful Communication. Mm -hmm. And it has so much to do with day-to-day, interpersonal, Mm -hmm. being able to have conversations with people that give off the meaning of what you really Mm -hmm. want to express. And that looks like body language. And that looks like stopping and not saying things before you say them. But they have created a series of videos. Mm -hmm. So we work on those things intentionally Mm -hmm. in advisory group. Now in the middle school, that's a lot of times taught in real time Mm -hmm. as they don't respond to each other well. And we stop and say, okay, Mm -hmm. how can we say that differently? Mm -hmm. Let's try that again. Mm -hmm. So I think it has to do with adult presence, teacher presence very much in the middle school and teaching them how to interact in Mm -hmm. real time. Okay, let's start over. I don't think, I don't think you expressed that Exactly the way you needed to express that. Let's start Mm -hmm. over. Let's stop and think about that. Right. When you think about those responses and uh, the teaching opportunities, talk a little bit about the perspective that we have as we see the Bible as having something to say about not only the human condition, but also the reasons we have for hope Mm -hmm. and the difference God makes in our lives. Not everyone has to be a believer to come to our school. Right. We don't expect everyone's halo to be brightly polished, and we (laughs) certainly don't claim to cause brightly polished halos, but there's a perspective we bring as we challenge students to think about their role and the significance of their words, a perspective that has to do with how God's drawn us to be certain kinds of Mm -hmm. people. Talk about that, how, how that informs the conversations with students and parents 
who may or may not share the confidence that God's at work in every mm-hmm, moment. Mm-hmm. I think just the the way we talk to our students about every single one of us as an image bearer, mm-hmm. I think that's a game changer. Mm-hmm. If if we can continue that conversation and let them know that we were all made in the image of God. God is not for you and against the guy who you don't like. He's actually for him as well. It really can, as they begin to understand that, Mm -hmm. it really does impact the way they communicate with each other. If they see that there's value in the other person as well, even when they don't agree with them, that's a game changer in the way that they communicate with each other. Also, just understanding the power of their words and that it can bring life or death Mm -hmm. and being able to really preach biblically, you know, Mm -hmm. from a biblical worldview that teach from a biblical worldview that they're, Mm -hmm. I mean, God gave them this ability and he gave it and it can bring life and death and you have this responsibility. So the backup that we have, I don't know how, I don't know how schools do it, who don't have a biblical foundation, Mm -hmm. who don't have a true north, and how can they truly teach that this is true? We just, we, we have, it's such a blessing to Mm -hmm. us that we have that view and we have that lens Mm -hmm. and, and that we can teach our students in that way. Speaking of that view, that lens, I think that perspective that there is authority outside of ourselves or our own personal interests, uh, that there's accountability for what we do that's based on truth that I don't pick according to my preferences, but I'm judged according to some other standard, some higher standard. Uh, Just talk about how that's articulated in the context of how we engage students in groups, but also in those one-on-one conversations, uh, the sense of this broader picture. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think it goes back to all of us being image bearers. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is a higher standard. Yes. And and they, most students come in knowing and Mm -hmm. understanding that, but when we, when we hold them to these standards, Mm -hmm. being able to reaffirm that they're an image bearer, Mm -hmm. being able to reaffirm that even though they have not yet met this standard, Mm -hmm. which we want you to still strive to meet Mm -hmm. when there's a discipline issue, when you know something has gone awry, mm-hmm. you're still an image bearer, and I love where that you always start with discipline issues that I have been in. You know, conversations with you, we've learned that you're just like us. Mm-hmm. As a as a child, you're just like me, and you're just like your parents. You you make mistakes, mm-hmm. but God is at work in your life, and you're an image bearer, and and He loves you, and nobody's giving up on you. Mm-hmm. So thoughtfully communicating that to them, but it does setting those standards for how they communicate, how they act under the, under that you are an image bearer, even when you mess up. I appreciate the hopefulness of that perspective, the idea that your words can make a difference, but also when we do things that aren't like they should be yet, that God's going to be working through that as well. Thanks for sharing some thoughts on being a thoughtful communicator. Sure. And we're trying to live that out here at Brentwood Academy. Thank you. Next up in our series, Upper School Director Andy Bradshaw joins Mr. Masters to share more about the portrait of a graduate's trait as a critical thinker.